based upon the number of YouTube views, a popular finance topic these days is the development of business performance management reports that compare actual results with some sort of plan such as budget or goal. This video shows a comparison of two ways of building a sales performance report, one using get pivot data functions and the other using Excel's data model and cube functions. This video was made using Excel 2016 without the power pivot add-in. It should work equally well in Excel 2013. As I'll explain in a minute, the actual data is more detailed than the budget data, which is commonly the case in practice. In this example, the actual data has some product information in it. And that means we can't create one table in Excel for all the source data, both actual and budget. For this example, I have some sales data by months of 2016, by country code and by product group code. I also have some corresponding budget data, and that is again, months of 2016, just by country code. There are also two code tables, one for product group and one for region, which has a list of countries and the respective country codes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is change the Excel ranges into tables. So I'm gonna insert table, my table has headers, okay. And I'm gonna call that sales. And similarly, I've converted the budget range into a table called budget, product group into a table called product, and region into a table called region. Incidentally, if you want to skip to the second part that uses the Excel data model and cube functions, then you should fast forward to about eight and a half minutes. Otherwise, this is where the get pivot data part starts. Now, if I build a pivot table off of this sales table, I'm gonna be stuck with country codes and product group codes that nobody necessarily knows what they are. So I need to add country and product to this table for it to be useful in a pivot table. First off, I'm going to insert two columns. And call those country and product. Then I'm going to create a, a VLOOKUP for country using region table second column. Likewise for product, and I've similarly added country to the budget table. Now I'm going to create a pivot table from the sales table. Month on rows. And the amount in values. I'm going to change the name of that to actual and make the number format that. Finally, while I'm here, I'm going to add a slicer for country. You'll notice that the months of 2016 have come out in alphabetical order. So I'm just gonna move them around to get them in the right order. So I reordered the months chronologically and adopting the same process, I created a pivot table with budget data in. I renamed the amount to budget and I added a slicer for country. Next, I'll create my sales performance report I'll start by copying the dates from the actual pivot. So 
to the report. And then I'm going to create a get pivot data function by pointing to the first number in the pivot. You can see that the parameter or the parameters are hard coded. So if I copy that down, I get the same number because it's always pointing to January 2016. What I can do though is I can replace the hard coded January and point to a cell, make that column relative, and then we get the different months numbers. Just briefly, the format of the get pivot data function is such that the first parameter is the value that you're displaying. In this case, it's a mount. The second parameter is the top left corner of this pivot table. So in this case, we point you to the actual pivot, A3, and that basically defines the pivot table. So that is the cell that it's referencing to define which pivot table we're pointing to. After that, it can be any number of um, parameters that are um, filtering the data. In this case, we have just one, and it's month, which is now in B4. Interestingly, uh, we can replace the word amount with actual, and that still works. What we can't do, unfortunately, is soft code the actual. If I take that out and point to this cell and make it uh, row relative, I get a reference error. Note that before you can generate get pivot data functions, you'll need to click in your pivot table, click on the analyze tab under pivot table tools, and then under options, make sure generate get pivot data is checked. I'm going to add data to the budget column by the same process. So I'll type in equals, go to the budget pivot, click there, press enter. And I'm going to make the amount and I shall soft code that to point to the month. I've added a variance percent column, which is simply actual minus budget, all divided by budget. Now, the variances look pretty crazy there, and that's because the numbers for here are for Argentina and the numbers for budget are Germany, because that's what we've got currently selected in the slices. I'm going to bring the slices from the pivot table sheets onto this sheet. So I'm going to copy that and copy that. So I've actually duplicated the slices. Unfortunately, we can't have one slicer controlling both actual and budget. They come from two different, two different data sources and therefore have two different pivot caches and one slicer will not control both. Now, I'm going to set this aside for a minute and create the same report using Excel's data model and cube functions. I'm starting off with the same tables that we had in the get pivot data example. So I've got my sales with country code and product group code, my budget data with country code, there's my product group table, my region, and I've created a tab called time, and I'm going to copy into it all the months that we're using, which I can do from there. And I'm going to make a table of that, so insert table, and we'll call that time. 
for the next step I'm going to create some relationships between those tables so I click on the data tab and relationships new and I'm going to connect the sales table country code to the region table country code and I'm going to connect the budget table country code to the region table country code. Um, Excel basically does an intelligent guess. If it sees names that uh, coincide, it will pick them for you. I'm going to connect the sales table, product group code to the product table, product group code. Also, the sales table month to the timetable month. And finally, the budget table month to also to the timetable month. These then are the relationships between the tables and essentially they're doing the same job but a better one of what the VLOOKUPs did in the previous example. Also, creating the relationships adds these tables to the Excel data model. You'll see more of that in a minute. I've created a new tab and put a title on Sales Performance Report and I'm going to insert onto it a pivot table and the connection is called an external data source, albeit that the data model is within this workbook. So it's this workbook data model. I click on that, click open, OK. Now, from my budget table, I want my amount. Also, from the sales table, I want the amount. And we'll look at renaming those in a second. Now, if I choose month from the budget table, then my budget numbers come out OK, but my sales numbers are all the same. And it's the um, Excel is trying to relate the two tables, and it can't do it. What we need to do is remove the month there and use the one that we created in that special timetable. That one is linked to both the actual and the budget tables, so it gives us the right numbers. Next, we'll rename and format the measures. I've shortcut through the budget one and we'll insert a slicer by clicking on the Analyze tab and insert slicer. Uh, we'll need to show all tables because the country table isn't currently active. And then we click on country. This must be done in the region table, not in the budget or sales tables. Click OK. And that way the slicer will control both actual and budget. Now, a better way to add actual and budget to this report is to use what in the data model are called explicit measures. Click on the pivot table to bring up the field list and right click on the budget table, click add measure, we'll call it budget. And we'll make that sum of budget amount. Number format, yes. And similarly, we can go to the sales table, right click, add measure, call that actual sum, and the sales amount. Now, we'll remove 
these fields that we created and renamed earlier. And if we look in our um, field list, we can see that we now have a measure. It has FX in front of it called budget. We can add that. Likewise for actual. One of the key advantages of using explicit measures is if you create another pivot table, from the data model, then those measures are readily available again. So we've got our, in our sales table, we have that actuals all ready to go. We don't have to load the amount and then rename it and change the number format. Meanwhile, back at our sales performance report, I've ordered the months chronologically. Now in the previous example where we built the report using get pivot data functions, we did that because we wanted to line actual and budget side by side and we were pulling from two separate tables. In this case, we're using the data model which allows us to build a pivot from several tables. So we don't need to do any extra work to compare actual to budget. However, if you need some more careful formatting or placement in your report or dashboard, then we can take advantage of Excel's cube functions to do that. What you need to do is click in your pivot table, click on the Analyze tab, and under the OLAP Tools dropdown, click Convert to Formulas. This will be grayed out unless you're using the, the Excel data model as your data source. So now this has converted the pivot table to, in the case of the numbers, cube value functions, and in the case of the labels, cube member functions. If you click on a cube value function and click on formulas, trace precedence, you can see that this is soft coded. It's been driven by the month and by the measure. It's also been controlled by the slicer. And we only need one slicer to control actual and budget. Because of the soft coding, um, if we remove a bunch of these formulas and leave one, then we can copy this one down, copy across, and it reproduces our report. And that makes it very easy to expand on a report, maybe to add a forecast column. Also, we can in freely insert columns and take pieces of the report and move them somewhere else. Now, I've also set up in the data model a explicit measure for variance percent. I've called it var percent. I'll very quickly show you how that was set up. I created just an empty pivot table and then in the sales table created that. If I click on edit, these are DAX functions. I'm using the divide, which says take actual minus budget, divide by budget, and if there's an error, like a divide by zero, return a blank with some formatting. I removed the previous variance percent, which I'd calculated on the face of the spreadsheet, and now I can retrieve that information from the database by copying that column and then changing the name of the measure. You don't have to start out with a pivot table and convert it to cube formulas. You can create them manually and there is uh, quite a lot of IntelliSense that will prompt you for the right parameters. So you can see that if you use Excel's data model as the data source for your report, then you can use one slicer to control both actual and budget. If you convert your pivot table to a cube formula report, then the cube functions are, are already soft coded. In fact, they will also soft code the measure. So that makes it easy for you to copy, paste, and edit functions to expand your report. And cube functions don't require you to have a visible pivot table to reference. Also, using the data model is a more robust way to manage our data. We don't need the lookup functions, and we can easily 
combine multiple tables and report on them in one pivot table or one cube formula report. If you're wondering what these are, I added some quick and dirty conditional formatting to the var percent. So thank you for watching, and if you want some more information on cube functions, visit excelcraft.com.